I have a question. How many of you have ever wanted to, or maybe still do, want to become an astronaut someday? All right. Now, how many of you think you are proficient enough in the mathematics needed for the job? All right, so we've got a couple hands out there. Now I know who the liars are. <laughs> and so why do I bring this up? Because there was a really interesting study done in 2015 by the U.S. Department of Education. And essentially, they wanted to determine how many of our high school seniors in the United States are ready for college math, those who are pursuing specifically STEM degrees. So they came up with a number, and that number is 16%. Only 16% of those students are ready for college math for their STEM degrees. And uh, why am I telling you this? Because I am not anywhere near those 16 percenters. I'm actually uh, not very good at math. I was never really good at math, especially in high school. I actually almost failed all of my classes. So I'm somewhere in the rest of that 94% of people that don't know math. <laughs> and so, even with that in mind, uh, I was able to do something pretty incredible, something that you, you would think someone good at math would be eligible for specifically, but I was able to travel to Russia last year to begin my astronaut training. And so I traveled with the Fox TV show Exploration Outer Space and uh, their incredible host Emily Calandrelli, that's her up there. And she is an amazing science communicator, definitely check out her show. Um, she's an even greater friend to have gone on this journey with. But we did go to Star City, Russia, to the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center to go through what astronauts go through. And the reason we did so was because we wanted to see what makes an astronaut an astronaut. Is it just the scary math or is it something else? And so um, I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk to everybody about this, because um, I think it is going to be pretty interesting. And so, uh, you know, for example, we went to this place. This is the human centrifuge. This is that thing that spins really, really fast, um, that simulates the g-forces of a rocket launch. Uh, this is the front of the uh, Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, where uh, Yuri Gagarin actually trained, um, as well as most astronauts and cosmonauts uh, so far. And then this is the Russian Sokol spacesuit. Oh, did you look at that? You know, I forgot to take pictures while I was there. This is going to be really hard to tell this story uh, without any pictures. Uh, wow. I really did screw this up. <laughs> yeah, you did. I mean, who forgets to take pictures during astronaut training? Uh, that, is this you? I don't know. What is this? Oh, sorry. sorry. I didn't mean to barge in like that. Uh, hey, it's me. Technically, it's you, but from the future. I thought we said not to talk about the time travel thing. Time travel is not public information, it's classified, right? Relax. I'm only here because you already messed up your cute little speech. And mm -hmm. by the way, next time, you might want to lead with, I don't know, introducing yourself. You know, he does have a good point. Hi, everybody. My name is Lee Giat. I am uh, one of the planetarium educators with Eddie at the Museum of Science and History. I'm a NASA public outreach astronomer. I'm a filmmaker, a pilot, um, and I have a YouTube series called The STEM that you guys should check out. My team is actually with me um, today. But I'm probably most well known invented for- invented time travel. What do you mean? I didn't invent time travel. Stop saying that. No one is supposed to know about that. Um, I don't know what he's talking about, guys. He's crazy. Well, um, how do you explain that? Oh, how did that get in here? Oh, look at that. Wait, think about it. This is our chance to show these people what it's really like to become astronauts. You said it yourself. They're not very good at math, right? So they're probably never going to become That's astronauts in their lifetime. You're twisting my words. No, 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 no. You, you can't tell what you said. That's not exactly what I meant. Okay. towards it. Uh, don't deny it, Lee. Stop. But seriously, let's go back, take some photos, and make things right. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. But you're coming with me, right? Yeah. I'll meet you there. October 1st, 2018, Star City, Russia, Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. All right, let's do it. <laughs> you know what? Why don't all of you come along as well? Ladies and gentlemen, under your seats are one of these time dilation radiation watches that'll protect you during the jump sequence. Go ahead and put those on now. <laughs> you actually believed me. Just kidding. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, it's good to be back. Yeah, it is. What was that? Three time space realities are trying to merge into one. It looks like it short circuited our time watches. It's gonna be tough getting us both home, you know. Because as of right now, there's only one time watch left anywhere near us. Wait, what do you mean three time space realities? There's only two of. Oh. Yeah, the medical exam. This sucked. Before we did any astronaut training, the Russian nurse checked our blood pressure to make sure that we could go through the day. And because someone had three cups of coffee, things didn't go our way. Yeah, and we failed. Three times. Shows how important it is to be ready for anything. Both physical and mental health are huge factors in selecting space people. Even the slightest anomaly could get you kicked out of the astronaut selection process. Jeez, tough cookies out here. Luckily we passed, otherwise, that would have been a waste of time. Alright, come on, let's go. Remember what happens next? How could I forget? Eventually we passed the medical exam and were strapped into this thing. The human centrifuge. The human centrifuge consists of a capsule, attached to a giant arm, attached to a pivot point. The capsule is at the very edge of the arm, therefore it spins the fastest. As the capsule spins around the pivot point faster and faster, the centripetal forces push my... <clears throat> sorry, our body back against the sea. This increases something known as the G-force. I forgot to mention that this machine is used to simulate the G-forces of a rocket launch, so that astronauts know what to expect when they go up for real. Once you get that banana, a launch from the ground to low Earth orbit, which is where the International Space Station lives, takes about 10 minutes. The Russian Soyuz rocket has three stages, and those stages separate when they run out of fuel. The centrifuge crew explained to us that astronauts and cosmonauts experience nearly four Gs for two and a half minutes. Then, the first stage separates from the rest of the rocket. The crew experiences a drop from four Gs to one G. And then, as the second stage ignites, back up to four Gs. Then again, second stage separation. Uh... The third stage is the final stage to ignite. This one carries the crew to low Earth orbit, where they'll finally prepare to dock with the International Space Station. The ride to orbit takes roughly 10 minutes, which is how long we spent in the central. Uh, should we be concerned about that? Wait, where are they going? I don't know. Maybe if you were a bit hungrier, you'd remember. Bread is not really common in space because the crumbs get everywhere. Right. But the, the flavor is really good. Yeah. Right, you want to try one? Yeah. Oh, yes. I very much remember that machine. Ah, the easy space oven. Culinary arts have never been so simple. Even though we messed up the first time. <laughs> Idiot. So, essentially, that's the same machine that's used on the International Space Station. It contains water filtered through the astronauts' urine and sweat. I know, gross. But it's for a reason. Water has to be filtered in space because it's too heavy to keep sending up on resupply missions. Dehydrated food is sent on cargo ships, and they use water already in space to hydrate it. Yeah, space pee. Take that, Bear Grylls. Where are these bananas coming from? Uh oh. Oh boy. Oh, that was close. Wait. You brought a camera for the photos, right? Okay. I think Lee from the past is one in the storage room. I'm gonna go check. Space suit time! I'm wearing a spacesuit, everybody. There you go. Boy, here they go. Got it. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, now that's something to remember. Oh, by the way, 
That's the Russian Soyuz spacecraft trainer. I'm sitting in the commander's seat, and Emily's the flight engineer in this case. No biggie, but we're learning how to fly a spaceship. This exact trainer is what astronauts and Russian cosmonauts use to practice the over 400 emergency procedures for launch, docking, undocking, and atmospheric re-entry. What makes these space people stand out is their ability to act on emergencies in just one breath. Like this. <laughs> like that fast. Oh! Look what I got! No way! So we only got one, huh? We can figure it out, right? I mean, if we just do the math or duplicate the sequence or maybe we could- It's okay. It's never about the math, Lee, don't you get it? This is your opportunity to make a difference. Whichever one of us goes back through our respective space-time tunnels first will ultimately be the one to take over the rest. But what'll happen to you? <laughs> it's never about me to begin with. Take this. Go be something, kid. Why do you have to be so extra about everything? Time travel really brings the blood to your hands. Whew. So, what makes an astronaut an astronaut? As a wise man once said, it's not about the math. And that wise man was me from the future, but technically the past. Anyway, 0.08%. You have a 0.08% chance of being accepted into NASA's astronaut uh, training program. So, to put it in perspective, Harvard University's acceptance rate is 6%. And so, with that said, how do we do it? How do we become astronauts? And the best advice I could give you, having gone through that experience, is, it's gonna sound cliche, but just express who you are. Figure out what role you wanna play in space exploration. Find a field in STEM that makes you wanna learn and never stop learning. We are on the horizon of a very, very new, very exciting space age. One much different than the one 50 years ago. And soon, space is going to need more. Not just NASA, but private space agencies too. They're going to need people like doctors, and chemists, and plumbers, and time travelers, and banana farmers, and etc., etc. So with that said, guys, um, I want to leave you with uh, one of my favorite quotes from Oscar Wilde, and that is, be yourself because everyone else is already taken. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Hey guys, it's Lee from Flying Ostrich. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through, and please consider subscribing for more science and space adventures. Subscribe now and we'll donate $200 million to Piper's College Fund, and uh, she wants to go to art school which is very, very expensive. Isn't that right? Also, a huge thank you to Whitley's Heating and Air in Jacksonville, Florida for making this video possible. It's the generosity from organizations like yours that help me and my team create awesome content all the time. So, thank you. As you watch my presentation, you may have also noticed a panel sitting behind me. That's because I wasn't the only person speaking that night. Check out Jacksonville University's The Science Of. Their channel has videos of the other speakers, like Justin Kugler from Made in Space, physics YouTuber Dr. Brian Lane, and professors from Jacksonville University. Hey, Lee. We need to talk. Emily, what are you doing here? What do you think, genius? Your time travel shenanigans merge two space-time sequences. Now there's people in your dimension that still believe the Earth is flat. Wait, flat Earth? How does that make any sense? We have photos and videos from- Stop asking questions. You coming or not?